In the previous module, we have seen that when we sample the continuous time signal, the spectrum or the Fourier transform of the original signal gets replicated at every integer multiple of sampling frequency. So you can see that the original signal, if it is having the spectrum, something like this, like a triangular shape that I have drawn it here, then the spectrum or the Fourier transform of its sample version is going to look something like this. Now the question remains, if I'm having a signal that is being sampled at an integer multiple of sampling duration, can we recover the original signal back? So let me try to zoom this, this, this signal that we have obtained it here. So what we have seen so far is the if we simply take the samples of the continuous or the of the underlined continuous time signal, then this sample version of the signal is going to have the Fourier transform something like this. We are going to have the replicas of the Fourier transform at every integer multiple of this sampling frequency. Now, the question, as I said, is that can we recover back the original signal? You can observe that the original signal is having this spectrum, something like this. It is actually band limited. Now, I would call this signal as band limited just because this original signal is having certain band of frequencies ranging in between minus omega m to omega m where this omega m represents the maximum frequency that is present in that signal. So this signal Fourier transform gets replicated if we try to sample the signal. Now if, now if we want to recover back this original signal, we need to get rid of this additional replicas that we are obtaining it here. What I mean by that is the original signal is having the Fourier spectrum as only this middle replica, whereas the other replicas are absent in the original signal. So what we need to do is to simply get rid of this replicas of the signals. Not only that, the original signal is having the amplitude as one, whereas these replicas are having the magnitude the maximum amplitude as 1 by t. So we also have to manage the amplitude here, the scaling factor here. Now how can we obtain the middle replica and get rid of the other replicas? So we can obtain the middle one and ignore the rest by simply filtering out the middle component. What I mean by that is, assume that if we somehow able to manage or come up with a filter or a kind of certain box function, you can say, which is having a magnitude of say t, that is constant t and zero otherwise. So this is zero otherwise. Consider that we are having such such kind of signal with us. If I simply multiply this signal with the one which we have obtained after sampling, you can see that the middle replica can be preserved, whereas the other replicas will be simply removed or filtered out. So this structure here, the, the nature of the signal that we have it here is called as a filter. So we must have a filter that is having the amplitude as t and the edges at which it gets zero must be somewhere between this omega m and omega s minus omega m. You can see that from here, you can see that the original signal is having the maximum frequency as omega m. When this original signal, the Fourier transform of this original signal gets replicated at every integer multiple of omega s, we must ensure that the cutoff frequency, as you can see that this point, these points of 
the signal that we must consider in order to filter out the middle component is called as the cutoff frequency though so this point this point is called as the cutoff frequency so this cutoff frequency let me write that this cutoff frequency must be somewhere between the maximum frequency present in the signal and the immediate next replica so the point this point if this point is omega s just because the distance from this omega s to this is omega m so this point will be omega s minus omega m so we must have this cutoff frequency in between this omega m and omega s minus omega m so if we try to come up with such filter that simply retains the middle component and ignores the rest then we may guarantee to recover back the original signal so let me write that we can recover back so we can recover the original signal that is x of t from its samples using a filter with magnitude t and cutoff frequency between omega m and omega s minus omega m so if we have such kind of filter then only we can retain the middle replica and ignore the rest and of course the magnitude of this must be t in order to retain the amplitude of the original signal now this is the one constraint one of those constraints that we must have in order to recover back the original signal let's look at different possibility here you can see that here when the signal gets replicated at every integer multiple of omega s we must ensure that this immediate replicas are not getting overlapped with each other what i mean by that is this omega s must be selected in a such a way that that means the sampling frequency must be such that this immediate two replicas must not overlap what i mean by that is these two signal replicas must not overlap that means this point omega m must not overlap with this omega s minus omega m if it does there is going to be a, a kind of overlap between immediate two replicas and the original signal is not going to be recovered let me draw a pictorial representation of that so consider the the case that i'm i've drawn it on the screen so this is the case in the figure that i have drawn it here is the case where this omega s is such that the immediate two replicas are getting overlap you may see that here this this being omega s so this i'll erase this yeah so this replica immediate replica is at omega s 
and this one is at minus omega s and you can see that this two points the two points that is omega m and omega s minus omega m both of these points are getting overlap with each other they are getting crossed with each other so the resultant signal the resultant signal is going to be looking like this something like this so the signal would look so we are going to have this flat surface here and the signal would be something like this and so on now this is due to the fact that these two replicas immediate two replicas are getting overlap so the signal is decreasing and at the same time the signal is increasing so we are going to have the flat spectrum in between so you can see that the original spectrum that was triangular in shape is now getting now getting out of shape so this signal is no more a triangular in shape so only the upper part of the signal is maintained now even if we try to filter out the signal using this filter we are not going to obtain the original signal so this is the next condition that we must impose in order to recover back the original signal so the condition is that this immediate replica that means the sampling frequency must be such that the immediate replicas the two consecutive replicas must not overlap what i mean by that is this omega s minus omega m must be higher than omega m so let me write that omega s minus omega m must be higher than omega m what is omega s omega is this s is the sampling frequency omega m is the maximum frequency present in the signal and this must be the condition this condition must be imposed in order to avoid overlapping between two consecutive replicas so what i mean by that is this effectively boils down to the fact that omega s must be higher than twice of omega m this very fundamental result that we have obtained it here this means that the sampling frequency must be higher than the twice of the maximum present maximum frequency present in the signal now we must ensure this condition to be satisfied in order to prevent this immediate overlapping between the immediate two replicas and to recover back the original signal so this is the the second condition that we must ensure the first condition was that yes we need to have this original the, in order to recover back the original signal we must have the filter structure which must have the the cutoff frequency lying between omega s minus m and omega m and along with that and so i mean now must write the second condition the second condition is that we must ensure the sampling frequency is higher or greater than twice the maximum frequency twice the maximum frequency
present in the signal. If th these two conditions are satisfied, then only we can ensure that the original signal is getting recovered, can get recovered. So let me quickly have an overview of what we have seen so far. We were having the original signal X of T whose spectrum was looking something like this, which was having the maximum frequency as omega m. That means the maximum frequency that is present in a signal, let it be omega m. And let this be an arbitrary shape of the, the Fourier transform of X of t under consideration. Now after sampling that signal, we are going to have the samples of that signal. And in the Fourier domain, we are going to have the replicas of the original spectrum at every integer multiple of omega s. So the, the samples that we have obtained is going to result in the replication of the original Fourier transform at every integer multiple of omega s. In order to recover back the original signal, if we need to recover back the original signal from its samples, we must ensure that the sampling frequency is at least greater than, it must be at least twice the maximum frequency present in the signal. It could be greater. If it's greater, it's not a problem because in that case, these replicas are going to be far away from this omega m. So there's going to be no overlap between these two points, omega m and omega s minus omega m. But it must not be less than twice of omega n because in that case, such situation will occur. And so this situation is when, when omega s is less than twice of omega m. So in that case, the overlapping is going to happen and we can't recover back the original signal just because these two immediate replicas are going to overlap and the shape of the waveform is going to change. So the first condition that we must ensure is that the sampling frequency must be at least twice of the maximum frequency present in the signal. And not only that, if you need to recover back the original signal, we must filter out it with a filter that is having the response, the magnet response as capital T, just in order to take care of the, the scaling factor one by T. And it must be zero otherwise, with a cutoff frequency that is being between this omega m and omega s minus omega m. If we ensure these conditions, we can, we can recover back the original signal from its samples. Very beautiful theorem, or you can say the result that we have obtained. This theorem is called as the sampling theorem. So the sampling theorem says that if certain signal x of t is a band limited signal, band limited means it is having the frequencies present only in certain band of band or in certain range and it is zero otherwise, then we can recover back the signal from its samples if we ensure the sampling frequencies at least twice the maximum frequency present in the signal. We shall see more into this in the next module.